Hello everyone, my name is Sabrina Melodius. Welcome to my channel. Today's video is a tutorial. Yes, it is. I have been wanting to design something really, really special and I did have this idea swimming around my head for quite some time and I didn't do anything about it until finally I thought, well, let's just do it. So I wanted to design something that is a very, very squishy, 3D and if possible, reversible. Because we all know by now that I really, really like my texture. And I love texture, 3D experience and reversibility. And I just find this all so magical. And uh, so I have designed a baby blanket. I hope you will fall in love with this as much as I have. It is a one row repeat. So I am now going to show you the blanket that I have designed. So uh, here it is and I have called it bubble wrapped with love because it reminds me of these bubble wrap uh, things that you can get when you wrap something up and you send packages. Do you see? This is what it reminds me of. And I'm going to show you a little bit closer up if I can um, how uh, 3D and textured it is. It truly, truly is. And it is just a one row repeat. So look how 3D and squishy this is. It's so squishy. It's beautiful. I absolutely, absolutely love it. So uh, this is it on this side and it is completely reversible and a one row repeat. So it's very easy, simple and quick to make. This is the other side. So as you can see, it is exactly the same on one side and the other side, just the same. So uh, besides doing this particular pattern, which is very easily, achi easily achievable, I also had ideas swirling around my head. Well, what kind of border can we do? And I just couldn't come up with a specific border. So I just realized it hit me all of the sudden that the, because of the nature of this stitch, sometimes you just have to think, you know, the simpler and uh, the better and the most effective as well. So I don't particularly think this needs a really, you know, uh, in-depth border if you want to do that that's okay but I am simply going to uh, suggest for you to do a single crochet border as you can see here it excuse me my blanket is going all over the place the single crochet border is really nice and ends this pattern really nicely. It's quite a nice and neat edging and not too much in your face, you know. So I have experimented with this beautiful yarn, which I will um, give you the details of in a moment when we discuss materials. But then I wanted to also experiment with another yarn, which I will also mention a little bit later on and admittedly this is still a little bit of a work in progress but I want to show you I wanted to do a, a variegated yarn so I have used a, this very variegated yarn and I think it works really really well so you could use uh, solid colors or you could use a variegated yarn and of course it is reversible and I just really love the squishiness of it. It's just really, really lovely for a baby or for an adult even or if you want to for your pets. It is completely customizable. I will give you the measurement for my blanket which is for a baby but obviously I will give you the uh, um, number, uh, what is it called? This 
stitch repeat <laughs> okay and then you'll be able to uh, customize your size of your own blanket or you could make a scarf as well so um, yes so shall we go ahead and discuss materials materials let's discuss materials because it's very important that we discuss that and uh, before I give you everything I do need to tell you that I have made a uh, baby blankets like the kind that you can use you know for strollers or prams and things like that so they're not very big baby blankets the sizes uh, the size for both blankets is 25 by 30 inches and I will show you that my notes are right here <laughs> see bubble wrapped with love 25 by 30 inches so let's see if I can come closer and show you 25 by 30 inches which is 63 by 76 centimeters so I will show you the yarns that I have used so the green one is like a mint green and I have used James C. Brett Super Soft Baby DK and each ball is 100 grams I have used 300 grams which is 870 meters or 951 yards although admittedly I have used a little bit less less than that I used just under 300 grams okay so the yarn I have used is this one and it truly is super soft and it is beautiful to use really is I highly recommend James C. Brett uh, DK this one is a super soft baby DK it is an absolute pleasure to crochet with and the other one which is this one is variegated one I have bought recently some yarn from the knitting network and uh, this is one of the balls that I have and each of these skeins is uh, 50 grams and I have used six so that makes also 300 grams and uh, uh, that means that I have used 900 meters or 984 yards it seems that with this one you need a little bit more yardage I don't have much left uh, left I don't have much left over from this yarn at all just a little bit so you definitely need more of this than you need the James C. Brett but still it is still within the 300 grams and that's if you do a 25 by 30 inches so bear that in mind that if you do a bigger blanket you will need more yarn and with these yarns I have also used a a five millimeter crochet hook now look at that here is my name yes it's a beautiful beautiful crochet hook which was custom made by wonderful crystal the uh, a yarny chicken and crazy cat lady and if you go over to her and say hello crystal i would love to have a customizable crochet hook please she does sell them and she makes beautiful work this is the second crochet hook that i have the other one is a four millimeter but i don't use that one today so i'm only going to use this one which is five millimeter so normally with dk you need a four millimeter but because of this stitch I recommend that you use a 5 millimeter or if you even want to why not a 5.5 I think a 5 millimeter will suffice if you are going to use a 4 weight yarn I would highly suggest a 6 millimeter crochet hook 
Okay, besides all this, myself, I am going to use a couple of stitch markers, but that is completely optional. So, now that we have discussed uh, the size of this particular item and also the uh, materials and so on and so forth, I think we are ready now to start with the tutorial. Okay, so we are now ready to start and we're going to start with our foundation chain. So, to start with a chain, you're going to do a slip knot and put it on your hook, just like so, as usual, of course. So now what you need to think about is how big do you want to make your blanket? I made my blanket so it is 25 by 30 inches, but you could make yours bigger or even smaller or do like a scarf. So, but all you need to know is that you need an odd number of stitches. So it could be 55 or um, 111 or something like that, I decided that I wanted 77 stitches. So I chained 77 plus 1, which makes 78. So it is entirely up to you how many chains you want to do. I am going to work on a swatch to work this particular blanket. So I let's see how many uh, chains I want to do because I don't want to do this like a huge, huge size and it will be very easy for you to understand how to make this blanket. So one, two, three. I need to position myself in the right place. <laughs> Um, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I think that will do. Eleven chains plus one. So remember, you need an odd number of stitches. Like my blanket here, I did seventy-seven plus one. So that will be seventy-eight chains but you will get 77 stitches. Okay, so the plus one and the foundation row we are going to start with that one. So in the second chain from the hook we are going to do a single crochet. Just like so, and because I work with single crochet, I always use uh, a stitch marker uh, in the first and the last stitch of the row. It's just a habit that I picked and I, I think it's super helpful. So, um, okay, let's carry on. So I did my first single crochet and then you're going to crochet, single crochet all along. And the first row is considered as the right side. So I know I said this blanket is completely reversible, but I think you should definitely note this row as the right side for when you get to do your border. Okay? So let's continue. At the end of this row, personally, I will have 11 single crochet. And I don't know how many single crochet you will have. It just depends how many chains you have done. So whether you will have 77 single crochet or 115 or whatever number you will have, it will have to be an odd number of stitches. Okay, so I'm going to count. So... <laughs> 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. I've got 11. I keep bashing the camera. I am so sorry. It's right there in front of my face. It is very irritating. Okay, we are now done with the foundation row. So now we're going to carry on with row 2, which will be a repeat row. It will be the one row repeat. Are you ready to start? 
So this is the first row that is done. So now we need to proceed on to the next bit. And it is the one we'll repeat as I have repeated already. <laughs> wow, I know I'm so annoying at times. But anyhow, are we ready to start? Uh, this one will repeat. So let's chain one and turn our work. It is super, 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 super easy. And you don't need to think too much about what you're doing at all. And that's what I like about it. And it creates this wonderful, wonderful uh, a texture. Okay, so the first stitch we're going to do a single crochet. The first and the last stitch will always end with a single crochet. I hope you can see this well. I have zoomed in as much as I could and uh, I suspect the light is really bad. So I'm going to replace my stitch marker right now. Okay, we have done our first stitch which is a single crochet. In the next one we're going to do a triple crochet. Triple. How do you do that? Is you're going to yarn over your hook two times. One, two, and then you're going to insert your hook into the next stitch. Yarn over and pull the yarn through. You now have four loops on your hook. Yarn over and pull through two. You have three loops. Yarn over and pull through two. You have two loops and yarn over and pull through the last two. And you have achieved your treble crochet. I never know whether to say treble or triple. Is it a triple? I think it's a triple crochet. Uh, okay, into the next stitch you're going to do a single crochet. And that's basically the repeat. The first stitch you do a single crochet and then the repeat of this is the next stitch you're going to do a triple crochet. And in the next stitch you're going to do a single crochet. So that is actually the repeat for the whole row. And when you do your uh, triple crochet it is very nice to notice that as you're doing your next single crochet, the triple crochet is going onto the outside. It curls on the outside, just like so, like that, like here. But it curls on the other side, not the side facing you, see, but on the other side. So I'm now going to do a single crochet. Into the next stitch, a triple crochet. And into the next stitch, a single crochet. It is super, super easy. And into the next one, a triple crochet. And into the last stitch, for me it is the last one, a single crochet. So I also want to tell you that um, as you work your blanket, it is so enjoyable because you really can experience the texture every single row. It is so beautiful and just really, really nice. So, okay, I am going to do one more row with you. Okay, so I will do just a, one more row with you on uh, how to do this stitch. So you're going to, uh, darn it, this camera is so annoying. It's too close. Chain one and turn your work around. Okay, so now you can see that all your uh, bubbles are facing you. It is not really a yarn eater either, which is why I really, really like it. So into the first stitch, we will do a single crochet. And immediately I will add my stitch marker. It is a really nice, simple and quick tutorial. Next stitch, we are doing a triple crochet. So you are basically doing your single crochet in a single crochet and a triple crochet, which was in a triple crochet in a row below. This is a triple crochet and you're going to do a triple crochet into that very stitch. 
And again, when you're going to do your next stitch, you will see that your triple crochet will curl naturally on the other side. So single crochet into the next stitch. And uh, there we are, and uh, the bobbling is right on the other side. So next stitch, you're going to do a triple crochet. Next stitch will be a single crochet. And the next stitch is a triple crochet also. Next stitch is a single crochet. Next one is a triple crochet. I'm pretty sure that you have the idea now. Next stitch is a single crochet. I have two stitches left, so I am going to do triple crochet into the next stitch. And into my final stitch, I am going to do a single crochet. And replace my stitch marker. So at the end of row two, this is what you should have facing you. So uh, there we are. And on the other side, you will see your bubbles are um, formed right there. It is just really lovely, isn't it? So that's basically it. So now, rather than show you how to do the border, I'm going to explain how to do it. It is equally as quick and uh, very simple and effective. So once that you have repeated this row as many times as you need, so that uh, you've got your blanket uh, to the length that you want it to be, I wanted it to be 30 inches and I believe I have done in total um, 90 rows and I ended on obviously the wrong side so that the next row that I start for the border will be the right side. So you're going to carry on until you finish to the length that you want your blanket to be and then you're ready to start on the border and it is truly very simple. It is one round. So you could do my border if you want to and leave your blanket as it is or use my border to actually uh, like a foundation uh, round and then add the next border. It's entirely up to you or obviously, you know, you could just use a completely different border altogether. So this is the border that I have chosen and I think it is it, it is exactly that. Sometimes the simpler the better. You don't want to always overcomplicate things and I find that really nice and really effective for a nice baby blanket. So it, it just depends what you want to do. So once you finished your um, a blanket. You are going to turn your work around so that the right side is facing you and it is truly very easy. You're going to chain one. Truly wish my lightening was my light was a lot better for you guys. I do apologize. And uh, oh, you know what? I am going to get the other blanket <laughs> as a background because the white is nice, but sometimes you need a little bit of contrasting color, yes? So, oh my goodness! Okay, this is one rated as annoying tutorial, but hopefully you will enjoy it all the same. So once you have uh, turned your work around, you will be facing your blanket, just like so here, and then you will start with putting three stitches in the corner stitch here and then a single crochet in every stitch until the end of the row and where's the end of my row it never ends uh, okay there it is 
and once you have reached the end of the row you're going to do three single crochet in the border and sorry the last stitch so that it cr it will create a corner okay so the first stitch you have three single crochet which creates a corner for the border then you do your one single crochet in each stitch and in the last stitch you're going to do three single crochet to create a corner for the border then you flip your blanket to the side just like so and you're going to do a single crochet at the end of every row so you will see a little space here at the end of every row just like a little hole and you're going to just do a single crochet in each just like here 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 you can see the little spaces there so you're going to do a single crochet in each one of those and then at the end of this particular side there you go there and then you flip your work and you're faced with the first chain and in that first chain you're going to do three single crochet to create a border and then you are going to just continue and do evenly some single crochets all around making sure you have three single crochet in every um, corner stitch so that you create a corner and it, it looks nice just like so here you see this is the center of my corner and it looks like a nice little square border it's super super easy and super effective I should have done that from the start um, yes it's really lovely so let's see uh, no we don't want to go closer maybe a little further that'll be great um, there we are there that's it so that is my border and the blanket and it's just so nice textured and reversible I just I I really really love it and already I'm planning to do a few more for little girls with nice and girly colors why not um, yeah I hope that you have enjoyed this very easy and hopefully quick-ish tutorial and um, if you do use that uh, particular stitch for anything really I would love to hear about it you could make a, a blanket or a scarf or absolutely anything you want or even dishcloths or uh, yeah absolutely anything you want face cloths anything at all um, even bags or yeah it's, it's just really lovely or even a mat you could use it as a mat a rug or yeah it's just the the uh, ideas uh, you can just have many ideas and different uh, projects that you want to make this with but I, I just really wanted to show you how to achieve this very easy and wonderful stitch so I hope that you have enjoyed my bubble wrapped with love crochet tutorial if you do have any questions or suggestions please feel free to put them in the comment section below or alternatively feel free to grab my email address which is in the description box below and send me an email I will be more than happy to respond and uh, yeah um, very eager to learn to to see your opinions on on this particular one do you like it um, myself I am completely in love with it I absolutely love it I'm addicted so okay I think that's it I've said enough um, so thank you everyone for watching and until the next time happy knitting and crochet everyone